It's the one, the only Sam Amick, where it is currently 1035 Orlando time. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Dave. How are you, my friend? Uh, yeah, I'm good. How are you? You know, I'm good. Yeah? I'm getting a, a rhythm to the bubble life. Late nights, man. Late nights. How long have you been there now? I left Sacramento on August 20th. So, so 13, I mean, almost two weeks. Two weeks tomorrow. Somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, and the whole process began then. Yeah. So, forgive me, um, but we're real life friends, so I'll ask you, and you can choose how how far or little you go into this. But you know, we we heard from Lou Williams yesterday talking about bubble life and how tough it is, and the, and the players have been there long, much longer than you have. And but that's one of the stories about the bubble. It's not just the playoffs; it's about coping and the human element. And you see that some that some a lot of family members are starting to join uh, uh, the players and. You've seen players be announced by their family members, which is also great. Two weeks in, how are you coping? How is the bubble for you? Are you starting to get, you know, uh, bubble fever yet? How, how is the personal side? Um, it's, it's hit and miss. To be honest with you, last couple of days, I came out of kind of the frustration of learning a new environment. Uh, there's an incredible amount of rules. There's, there's, uh, there's grave concern regarding following those rules and, and your boy, uh, had, uh, <laughs> had a bad finish to quarantine where, uh, it was not the wisest move I ever made, but, but I, I was desperate for fresh air and uh-huh. I sat in the uh, doorway for a short time on day seven of quarantine mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and unofficially had a day added to my quarantine. So uh-huh. that was great. Now, can I ask you, do they have like, are, <laughs> Are there like uniformed quarantine people that roll around and look and have like little, uh, little, little papers they write tickets on and stuff? Like, I, I mean, there's security, and so uh, it's funny because we, I had actually heard, and I'll, I'll probably never get to the bottom of this. I had actually heard that somebody on campus uh, called this baby in, and, and, and I was the snitch line victim. What? Is, <gasps> yeah. No. Yeah. You think it was a so, rival journalist? I think so. I do too. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping this is my teaser. I I'm hoping uh, that on the next episode of the Tampering Podcast, <laughs> I, I might get into this deeper with all the details. That it, there's there's more of a story there. I'm not quite ready to share the whole thing. I know you're not but, gonna. I know you're not gonna say any names. And I. But let me uh, let me just ask this: Do if 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 Las Vegas were to throw out five names in the betting line and one of those names was the correct one do you think you'd put money down like do you have an idea in your mind do you have an idea who narked you out uh no okay okay yeah i don't okay all right leave it to us radio guys we'll speculate for you because it's fun (laughs) i will say and i'm definitely not saying his name there was one friend who uh media friend who had said hello from very far away i'm on the second level he was down on the first level so like not only 30 feet away but a different level and he said hello and saw me out there and so i did approach him not to say hey did you snitch me out but to say um is there any chance that you were kind of being chatty with other people and maybe mention it because my thought was this i mean you know one thing you do learn real quickly is that um it, it's how do i explain this the people who have been here, players on down, um, there is a weird, uh, there's a tension about how they've already been through this. They're, you know, it, it's a, it's, it's like a fraternity that you don't belong to yet, if that makes sense. Hmm. And and so I could see somebody maybe hearing that oh somebody sat in the doorway and somebody just deciding like oh yeah he's a nice guy but you know f that I'm calling it in. Um, so that would be my thought because people are, you know, people are struggling in some places on the flip side to, to kind of take it in a different direction. The last couple of days have been really enjoyable. I mean, this is a, a reporter's dream when it comes to, you know, once you get past wearing the mask all the time and all the rules, um, the best basketball players on the planet are all within walking distance every single day. Sure. And you know, that part is crazy today. I'm laying in bed right now, but, you know, I'll be making the rounds from Rockets practice to Lakers practice to the two games tonight. Now, it, it's a, it makes for long days 
because you can only do so much. And then within that, the writing process is challenging because, you know, for the most part, I'm going to write every day. So getting a rhythm is hard, but it's, it's been really fascinating. You know, I was uh, interested, especially after our, our conversation last week, kind of in the same realm is you're in there, you're in quarantine, but you also see a lot of your peers out there being able to cover these teams at a time where, you know, all eyes are on the NBA. Did you catch yourself getting a lot of FOMO while you were in quarantine of your peers? <laughs> yeah, big time. Because, Jay, the night that this, uh, I guess two nights after this, no, one night after this happened where I got popped um, was the Wednesday player meeting, the, one of the most historic, you know, moments in NBA history. And you're kind of, you're here, but you're not here. And so, yeah, there was major FOMO that night because I'm sitting there thinking, if I was not in quarantine, I'm going to walk over and see who I can catch, you know, see what I can see. See, you know, that's what we do. So you had a lot of FOMO. And then now time flies because I've got some buddies who there, there's only a select amount of, um, of dates when people can come in. So there was a later date where some other reporters are in quarantine now and they get out, I think on Monday. And so it's funny. I've been in touch with some of those guys and you know, they're going through the FOMO. In fact, yesterday, just to give you a taste of it, um, there's a fairly streamlined, uh, alcohol delivery service here. (laughs) Um, and it's, and, and so inevitably what every reporter does upon arrival is to put their order in. Um, and so yesterday, I mean, I'm trying to be the nice guy because I've been on the other side where I ended up running around and delivering three boxes of booze to the doorsteps of three different reporters who are quarantined. And so, you know, you're dropping it off, knocking on the door and feel like you're, you're a kid doorbell ditching because you're not, you can't interact. Right. So, you know, you're running away and, and even I have a you know few pictures where I'm, I'm saying hello through the window to the person who looks like a a caged animal. So it's, it's all pretty weird. <laughs> Sam Amick, who uh, will be appearing on a very well-known uh, national radio show. Here That's shortly. right. The Carmichael Dave show. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, he moved, he actually moved them off so he could, oh. yeah, so he could spend time with us. Wow. Yeah, how about that? Uh, joins us right now from the athletic. Although that's, I gotta be on video, Dave. I gotta get out of bed. I gotta think like maybe take a shower. It's, oh, uh, you do. I I, oh, yeah. what do you do? Hey, do you, is that zoom? It's Zoom, yes. Yeah, that sucks. Well, as opposed to what? I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not flying to their studio. No, dude. I'm saying <laughs> literally. Is it Zoom or is it like WebEx or Skype? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah oh. Okay. Look at Sam. Yeah, smart Alex. <laughs> Sam Amick with us. <laughs> yeah. uh, Steve Nash. So we're going to hear Steve Kerr. We're going to hear Jason Kidd. Uh, this is usually where the host gives their take on everything to the guest and then leaves the guest nothing to clean up. Sam, what is your take on that hiring? First first thoughts. I like it. Um, I'm a sucker for Steve. I, I just He's a fantastic human and a guy who uh, has just got universal respect. And I've got a decent sense of the relationship between Steve and Kevin Durant which obviously played a huge part. And I mean, I liked it from the, like the media standpoint. Cause I just, I do enjoy it when teams kind of do things in the dark that catch us off guard and, and you just kind of tip your cap and go, okay, like I see what you were thinking there. And, you know, keeping Jacques Vaughn on is big. I do hate the fact, um, and this is you know, a different topic, but it's, yeah, I do hate the fact that, I mean, the league at a time when, diversity is incredibly important. The league has gone from, I just saw a tweet about this, uh, from 14 black head coaches in 2012, 13, uh, down to eight entering these playoffs and now five. Yes. So that's not great. Um, and then, but then within that, it's like, all right, in a vacuum, you know, to your question, um, uh, you know, the Nash hire makes a ton of sense because Kevin Durant has trust issues. Uh, major trust issues. Right. And Steve is somebody who he trusts and who he respects. And he also gives Kevin, I think, you know, not only, um, you know, that dynamic, but it's almost like you, Kevin gets to take a piece of his Warriors experience, you know, have it salvaged from an optics standpoint. And because Kevin left the Warriors with everybody kind of unofficially deciding that 
that he had set fire to each and every relationship that came with that that chapter, if that makes sense. And, you know, this kind of shows you, you know, like behind the scenes, there was redeeming value in things like his relationship with, with Steve, who was a, uh, you know, a kind of a fringe member of the Warriors at the time, but he was around a lot. So I like it. Um, you know, the Kyrie situation, point guard language is going to be easy for the two of those guys. And, you know, the only question as others have said is, you know, the, he's not a tough, I mean, he's a tough guy, Steve is, but you know, when he's got to tell them what they don't want to hear, I'm curious to see how stylistically he is that way as a coach. Sam Mamick from The Athletic joining us. Sam, I want to transition over to the playoffs because in the Eastern Conference we've had two, uh, I guess you can say surprise series. Uh, The one I really want to focus in on is Toronto and Boston. I've really enjoyed that. Um, I asked Dave this the other day. I kind of want to get your opinion on this. I know we're we're two games and the series is not over. But from your standpoint, um, just kind of, have we underestimated the Celtics or was there a little overestimating of the Raptors in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I don't know because I, I, I mean, I really liked what the Raptors were doing um, in the seeding games and in the first round and, and kind of wrote like, let's not forget these are the champs and, and they looked like it and they looked like they just had this culture and this depth and this style and versatility that was going to serve them well. Um, but Pascal Siakam has really struggled and they just haven't been the same team lately. So, you know, I mean, they, they looked legit. I, I could see them in the finals. I could see them beating Milwaukee. Um, yeah, we, we overlooked Boston, you know, Gordon Hayward got hurt and that's, that's, you know, a big part of their team and that's a name. And I think Jason Tatum in particular is the one that continues to get, not necessarily overlooked, but I mean, one of the Celtics folks said to me the other day, like, you guys are still not talking about his defense enough and just how elite he is on that end and how he's become somebody who's one of the best two-way players in the league. You know, Jalen Brown is somebody who can defend. Marcus Smart has honestly become one of my favorite players to watch. And, and to that point, guys, man, I will say, and Dave, to your original question of bubble life, uh, Man, I, I'm just loving the, the the media seats at these games. I mean, you're ten feet away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's 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 incredible. And so, Marcus Smart, watching him, and not to be all dramatic, but you know, seeing the sweat, you know, kind of drip off his brow, and seeing, you know, I remember this one play in particular. He's guarding Siakam in the post, and Pascal's trying to back him down. Marcus pulls the chair out, and Pascal falls but he falls on marcus's head as he hits yes. the floor and you're watching this and it just gives you a real appreciation for how tough some of these guys are and how fast the game is and so that part has been fun and, and the celtics yeah i mean they, they they have a good vibe going um not a ton of expectations and i think you know obviously toronto's in trouble sam amick joining us sam um when uh, I'm, I want to ask you what we were going over also earlier this week, thought of you, who do you think had a bigger impact on their team this year? Who would you give your newcomer of the year award if it came down to Jimmy Butler and Chris Paul? Oh, man, that's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Let me yes, yeah, put the crown up. Have, have the hat. Do you lap. Yep. Gotta grab the hat. Go ahead. I can see you now. Yep. Oh. Um. I don't know. Jeez. Okay. I don't even want to answer. You want to pass? I, I, you can pass. We'll come back to you at a different. I time. mean, I, Jimmy just gave me a fantastic interview, so I'm a little biased. <laughs> oh well, he, he did. He did. I saw. Yeah. Him. Um. That's good enough. So no, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Chris Paul because Jimmy entered a heat culture that was well. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of audio in my ears. Oh, oh, I oh there we, sorry. That's, uh, that should be fixed. There you go. Hi. It's okay, I know you, you're new to this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that shade at you or shade at me? That's shade at both of us. He's just trying to buy time for his Chris Paul answer. You better not pull this crap on the next show, Sam. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to zoom in from my bed. Is that a problem? 
<laughs> so so Jimmy Butler was nice and gave you a great interview, but shade it. Here no, you go, he, Chris Paul. He he entered the culture. The Heat culture was well established long before Jimmy got there. Mm-hmm. He just happens to like he's. He, I mean, listen, the, the the flame was kind of fading a little bit because they didn't have a star to keep it going. But Eric Spolstra, you know, is the guy who was holding the torch while they got their roster together, and, and so now Jimmy just fits, fits in perfectly. And I love the impact he's had. But Chris, he, you know, legitimately just had people not only thinking the Thunder wouldn't be any good, but people mm. looking at their kind of their clocks and wondering how long until Chris Paul was getting traded to Miami or somewhere else. Ironically, you know, Miami was the team that was talked about. And Chris was, people kind of assumed that he was just going to try to get out of the small market, get out of the, the place that people thought was not not going to be a wasteland, but it, it was going to be a, a rebuilding project because they got so many draft picks. So Chris going in there and deciding, no, nah, you know what, I'm going to go kind of just hoop and lift up these young guys with Shea Gilders Alexander. People thought that Chris would get in his way, and, and instead all he did is make him better. And, um, and you see that, I mean, you know, Lugans Dort is just incredible. And you see Chris out there screaming at him, talking to him, you know, you know, making him better. So Chris has been amazing. And honestly, there's part of me that was kind of bummed out that they didn't pull that game off last night because to see Chris get his revenge on the Rockets when, uh, they traded him when he was not happy about that would have been crazy. Yeah, I, I was kind of in the same boat as you, although I, I really wanted the Thunder to win because I thought that would have uh, led to chaos within the Rockets organization. Uh, they're going into the second round to play the Lakers. Sam, I, I would imagine, I mean, obviously the Lakers are heavy favorites. If the Rockets fail to get to the conference finals, are we looking at the end of the Maury, D'Antoni, and possibly Harden era in Houston? I mean, not the Harden era at all, no way. Um, but uh, you know, almost definitely the Antoni era. Uh, and then Daryl, you know, uh, they gave him a contract not long ago. He's got several years left. So, I don't know, you hear mixed things on that. But, yes, that is definitely a thing that people talk about. Um, you know, and, and so I don't know where Tillman Fertitta, their owner, his head is at. But it is, it's, it's super uncomfortable because they built that roster – in the kind of way that really, like, Mike D'Antoni is the perfect coach for what they decided to do, trading Clint Capella, going small, um, you know, and, and so I don't know how that comes out of the wash once he, you know, as I do expect, ends up leaving. So, um, yeah, I don't know. And it's just, they, they're becoming such a, you know, a team that, you think about the old Utah Jazz teams that never got the job done and, but still, we're pretty legendary. Um, I, I feel like the Jazz had, you know, I'm talking the Stock and Malone Jazz. You know, they had a still a clean reputation that where it's just the ball didn't bounce their way. Right. The, the Rockets group, it, it's much dirtier, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like the optics of it. It's just like, all right, whatever way you tried to skin the cat, like it just didn't work. And I think part of why it didn't work is, is you guys. You didn't get it done. Well, um, li- likely Rocket fans will point to Chris Paul's hamstring. <laughs> And say hey, they 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 beat they probably and then Warriors fans yeah. will point to Andre Iguodala's injury. And, yeah, that's true. You and, know, I mean that's that's what they do. I'm, su- um, I'm surprised. And by the way, the yeah. following year, Chris, you know, I mean, following year, Kevin Durant goes down, right? And they still can't beat him. So yeah, I'm kind of over that narrative. But well, I hear you. And I, but I'm with you, uh, D'Antoni gone. I, it, let, let's it, here's how I'm guessing things play out. Lakers beat the Rockets. D'Antoni gone. You're going to fire your coach. It's a perfect time. I, I don't know why you hold on to a GM when, A, he's – first off, I, I thought Daryl Morey was gone during the China stuff. Uh, Fertitta's – to, to me, it would seem really weird if Fertitta let Daryl Morey mortgage the future for a second-round exit, in which the, the, the Thunder almost beat him, and then turn around and let Daryl Morey stick around to hire the coach – which means you're probably going to have Maury for another three, four years. You don't want to do coach before GM. Kings fans know that. You really think Maury's got a decent shot of staying there? I think he's gone. No, I do. Um, because on top of that, you know, Daryl was, was all in on the Antony once they decided to do it. But people also forget that he had his eye on Jeff Van Gundy. And right. Les Alexander, the previous Rockets owner, um, was the one – 
who made the call on D'Antoni. And so that, you know, you can see a through line to where Tillman could say, all right, let me, let me try the, the Daryl Van Gundy thing. Uh, you know, I think that's a distinct possibility. Ty Lue would be in the running for that too. You're, uh, you're ruining yeah. my, we can't get Hanky more. He's going to be the new GM here narrative. Same. No, he's not going to be the new GM. Exactly. Wow. You're no saying that it really, no, why, why would he do it? Because he's Sam Hinky. Okay. Le, le, oh, let well, me, let me rewind. Let me Daryl re- was going to be the GM. Yeah. Daryl. I'm saying Daryl Morey. If he left Houston, I think no, insta- has, it instantly no becomes way. attractive to Sacramento ownership. Oh, sure. Great. Oh, you don't think he, he would take the job? No. Okay. I mean, I'm you can, this is fun. I'm going to lean in and you can just play this when yeah. they hire him, uh-huh. you know, and make fun of me. <laughs> So um, <laughs> that'll be fun to listen to. Yes. But like, no, I have, I, I definitely do not think that he would want the job. Mm. Wow. Guys like that. I mean, it's a little bit like Hinky, like where you, 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 you had a run, uh, you made a bunch of money and, and you know, they work in different spaces. They're, you know, they're, they're tied to the tech world and all those things. I mean, you know, Sam Hinky's living his best life right now. Um, sure. gets time with his kids. So, no, I just don't think after this Rockets run that he would, Daryl would pivot if they let him go and go to Sacramento. Um, you don't think he's no, tainted think, from leaving Houston in a bad spot in the China stuff? You don't think he goes out tainted after Houston? Why is he tainted because of the China stuff? I mean, well, no, no, no. I, really, I'm not arguing the morality of it, let's be clear, obviously. Yeah. But, but that obviously – sent some shockwaves with certain members of ownership in the NBA that don't that don't share the same worldviews perhaps as the NBA itself does. I mean we've heard right, about Right, but but the momentum has only continued since then regarding the the spotlight being shown on the NBA's um problematic relationship with China. And so in a way, he's on the right side of history. I agree. And I agree, and this this is a conversation for a different time because we're out of time. We should have this, though, because I think there's a difference between what the public narrative is and what the moral narrative is and what some NBA owners are thinking while they're hemorrhaging money. But Yeah, I'm just saying that it, it would have hurt Daryl if the league doubled down on the sure. sorry about Daryl, we love China sure. type thing. Um, that's not what has happened. That's all I'm saying. Sam Amick of The Athletic. You can hear him nationally, and we are lucky enough to get him locally. Go to theathletic.com. Get yourself a subscription. They have specials all the time. It truly is the best sports journalism all in one place and a clean layout out there. Uh, brother, what are next, you sending me, huh? Uh, you'll see next week. <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see next week, but I'm very excited for this. I need an this. elliptical. Um, I need a microwave. Um, just small request. Wow. So. What, what, if, what if it was an elliptical <laughs> with a microwave? <laughs> That'd be amazing. Eating uh, while working out. Go, go take a shower and uh, you know get presentable, dude. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks, Jay. It's the Carmichael Dave Show on Sports Eleven Forty KHCK.